What's up, everyone, and welcome to another daily episode where we're going to talk about a major Facebook credential harvesting campaign that nabbed millions of users' credentials. If you don't learn anything else from this episode, you just might learn how not to get caught. It is rare that the identities of participants and ringleaders in criminal phishing schemes are uncovered. But in many cases, when untangling the web of a cyber criminal group, particularly with financially motivated e-crime actors, there are enough breadcrumbs left behind by a threat actor on forums in code and elsewhere to point investigators in the right direction. This is one of those cases. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. In the case of PIXM's investigation into a large-scale Facebook credential harvesting campaign that has been active since the fourth quarter of 2021, not only were those breadcrumbs very much available, but researchers uncovered a campaign whose scale has potentially impacted hundreds of millions of Facebook users, and whose complexity offer insight into the evolving nature of phishing operations, especially from a technical perspective. PIXM detected a fake Facebook login portal that a user had attempted to visit in September of 2021. The volume of pages from this campaign would steadily rise, peaking in April and May of 2022. The structure of the landing page, this fake but realistic looking login page for Facebook, would remain almost completely unchanged until this very day as the campaign continues to grow. Hey, congratulations. You're doing a great job by wanting to learn about this social media credential harvesting campaign. I appreciate your support by watching my episode about it. If you're new to my channel and have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and smashing the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you the daily cyber news as well as insights into the newest important cybersecurity news stories like this one. With my insights, you can be better prepared to protect your company, your family, and of course yourself against these and other cyber attacks. So hit the subscribe button now and let's continue to learn about this story together. So researchers uh, later found a link to a traffic monitoring application. It's been discovered that the tracking metrics for this service can even be viewed as an unauthenticated user. So you can just drive by, check out the, the metrics and keep going. Now, this allowed researchers to not only view the threat actors traffic data for this landing page that they observed one of their customers trying to hit, but hundreds of other landing pages that the threat actor had developed. It appeared evident that these links originated from Facebook itself. That is, a user's account would be compromised and in a likely automated fashion, the threat actor would log into that account and send out the link to users friends via Facebook Messenger. Facebook's internal threat intelligence team does know about these kind of things, they're privy to these credential harvesting schemes. However, this group employs a technique to circumvent their URLs from being blocked. It is pretty simple. This technique involves the use of completely legitimate app de deployment services to be the first link in the redirect chain once the user is clicked on the link. So they first go to a, click on the link, they go to a legitimate page that redirects them to the malicious page. So after the user has clicked, they'll be redirected to the actual phishing page, this fake but yet good looking Facebook login portal. But in terms of what lands in actual Facebook's metrics and Facebook's tracking their, their super technology, it's a link generated using a legitimate service that Facebook could not outright block without blocking legitimate apps and links as well. These websites are used to deploy and generate URLs for complete legitimate apps, but are also regularly used by threat actors due to their ease of rapid deployment. While the threat actor was using my.famous.co, for example, there are other, this bit.ly and just a ton of others. Now the link to their site would simply be my.famous.co slash unique ID, but again, it could be a bit.ly URL or whatever other link shortening or link deployment um, services that might be used. Once one of them was found and blocked, it was trivial and based on the speed that the researchers observed, likely automated, to spin up a new link using the same service with a new unique ID. Now they often saw or observed several different link, unique links used in one day per service that was used. So again, my.famous.co is not the only service that was being used for this. 
When someone visits the URL using one of the Threat Actors usernames, they arrive at a page. It shows active sessions, uh, sessions under readers on websites using a tracking code. So far, researchers have identified roughly 400 unique usernames, all connected to different Facebook phishing landing pages, but all associated with the same campaign. When taking an average from just 17 random usernames, researchers saw each unique username, that means like in the tracking metrics, they saw that that unique username received 958,228 page views so far, average. Some of these usernames may still be in use. Live stats can be viewed by navigating to who's um, who's.among.us slash stats and then the actual username used for the campaigns. During routine analysis, researchers discovered the connection between the pages using PIXM's deep HTML analysis feature, which enabled them to view and analyze the underlying code on the pages after they were flagged as phishing. So that's the news. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you have not already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.